Hey everyone, ever dream of seeing your art like actually featured, you know, in a prestigious online magazine or blog? Mm -hmm. That dream uh, could be closer than you think. Yeah. Today we're diving into exactly that using uh, insights from this article, how to promote your art online through art blogs and magazines. It isn't just about a quick ego boost, right? No, not at all. This article really highlights how strategic promotion like this, it can be a game changer for your whole art career. Totally, yeah. <sighs> Think of it this way. A feature is like a 24-7 exhibition, just quietly working its magic even while you sleep. Compare that to the constant hustle of social media, you know? Right. Or the logistical mountain that is like a physical show. Oh, yeah. It's a big difference. It's like the difference between shouting into the void and having like a dedicated spotlight on your work, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But beyond just visibility, the article also talks about the credibility boost that a feature provides. Absolutely. All right. Imagine like a potential collector just scrolling through countless artists online, right? Right. And then, boom, they see your work showcased on a blog that they trust. That endorsement, that speaks volumes. Mm -hmm. It's like a stamp of approval from the art world saying like, this artist is the real deal. Right, right. It's that extra layer of validation that can really make someone stop and take notice. And speaking of connections, the article doesn't shy away from the networking potential here either. Oh, it's huge. Like, let's say you're yeah. like a ceramic artist tucked away in a small town. Your work is stunning, right? But your reach is limited. Now, imagine one of your pieces catches the eye of a renowned gallery owner, right? Mm. After being featured in, like, an online ceramics magazine. Suddenly, doors that seem firmly shut begin to open. It's like throwing a rock into a pond and watching those ripples of opportunity just spread outwards. And the mm -hmm. best part, you don't need a trust fund to make this happen. Exactly. Online features, particularly in like reputable publications, can be significantly more budget friendly than traditional avenues like um, gallery exhibitions. Yeah. Some platforms even allow for like direct sales or website links, potentially turning that feature into direct income. Talk about a win-win. The article does a great job of laying out how drastically the art world has shifted online. It's not just about having a website anymore, is it? Not at all. We've seen this incredible explosion of online platforms that cater specifically to artists. Platforms like ArtStation and Behance have become the new virtual galleries, offering a dedicated space to showcase your portfolio. But they're not just like digital replicas of those physical spaces, right? Yeah. These platforms come with their own unique advantages. Absolutely. One of the most significant is the sheer global reach. Think of um, an artist creating breathtaking textile art in like a remote village, maybe somewhere in the Andes Mountains, right? Yeah. Through these platforms, their work can be admired by someone in London, Tokyo, or New York all at the same time. That's the power of the online world. It's breaking down those geographical barriers that, you know, once felt so limiting for so many artists. Exactly. And then there's the like interactive element. Unlike a silent painting in a gallery, these platforms allow for like direct dialogue between artists and viewers. <laughs> Imagine posting a new piece, mm -hmm. right, and instantly receiving feedback, insights, and even constructive criticism from fellow artists and enthusiasts worldwide. It's like having a global focus group right at your fingertips. Precisely. And that kind of engagement, that sense of community, can be invaluable for artistic growth. Now, of course, the article is realistic. It doesn't sugarcoat the fact that simply posting your art online, mm -hmm. it doesn't guarantee you know, magical feature. Right, there's a strategy to it, right? Yeah. It's about being intentional. Exactly. Instead of blindly sending your portfolio to every art blog you stumble upon, it's about finding platforms that genuinely resonate with your style, your medium, and your goals. It's about finding your people, so to speak. Right, yeah, and the article gives some great tips on how to do just that, starting with using search engines strategically. Yes, it's all about those long tail keywords. Instead of searching for something generic like art blog submissions, try something more specific like um, call for submissions, abstract photography, urban landscapes. Adding those extra layers helps you zero in on platforms that are a perfect match for your work. It's like using a metal detector instead of just digging holes in the sand hoping to find treasure. Exactly. And don't underestimate the power of tapping into online art communities. You know, sure. Engaging in like forums or groups can be like unearthing a gold mine of information from fellow artists sharing opportunities and recommendations to even like 
cautionary tales about platforms to avoid. Right. It's like having access to a collective well of knowledge, helping you navigate all the ins and outs of this online art world. The article also mentions LinkedIn, which I found interesting. Yeah, um, it's often overlooked, but it makes sense. Imagine connecting with like editors, writers, and contributors who work for those very platforms you're hoping to be featured on. Right. Building those relationships can be incredibly beneficial. It's about making those connections and nurturing them. So you've done your research, you've found you know, some promising platforms, you're itching to hit that submit button, but how do you know which ones are truly worth your time and energy? That's where the real detective work begins. Right. It's not just about follower count or like a fancy website, you know. There's a deeper level of analysis that's crucial. The article talks about evaluating platforms based on their audience, relevance, and even the transparency of their submission guidelines, right? Exactly. For example, a smaller platform with a highly engaged audience that's passionate about your specific niche might be far more valuable than a massive platform where your work just gets lost in a sea of content. Think of it as the difference between having a meaningful conversation with a small group of close friends, right? Versus trying to shout over a crowd at a concert. That's a great analogy. It's about quality over quantity when it comes to audience engagement. Absolutely. And then there's the aspect of relevance. Let's say you're a digital artist specializing in um, surreal, dreamlike illustrations, right? It wouldn't make sense to submit your work to a platform that primarily focuses on, like, traditional oil painting or hyper-realistic portraits. Right. It's about finding that perfect alignment between your art and the platform's overall, you know, aesthetic and focus. Precisely. And those submission guidelines. Think of them as a window into a platform's professionalism. Clear, concise guidelines not only streamline the process, but they also show that the platform respects your time and effort. It's a sign that they've got their act together. Yeah. Okay, so you found that dream platform, the audience is spot on, the aesthetic aligns perfectly with your work, and their submission guidelines are crystal clear. Now it's about crafting an application that stands out from the crowd, right? Exactly. You wouldn't show up for a job interview in your pajamas, would you? No. This is your chance to present your best self artistically speaking. And in the online world, that all starts with a killer digital portfolio. The article specifically mentions platforms like Behance and ArtStation as like great options. They are. They provide a dedicated space to showcase your work. But remember, it's not just about like randomly uploading images. Think of your portfolio as a visual autobiography. You know, mm -hmm. choose like three, four key projects that showcase your artistic growth and use the captions to provide um, context and insights into your creative process. So it's more than just pretty pictures. It's about telling a story, you know, creating a journey for the viewer. Exactly. It's about drawing them into your world, you know, what? giving them a glimpse behind the curtain of your creative process. And alongside that amazing portfolio, a well-crafted artist's media kit is essential. Right? Absolutely. Think of it as a professional resume for your art. Okay. It's where you provide all the essential information. Yeah. A concise bio, your artist statement, any press coverage you've received, upcoming exhibitions, contact details, everything in one like easily accessible place. It's like that one-stop shop for anyone who's intrigued by your work and wants to learn more. Exactly. And here's where many artists, even seasoned ones, sometimes stumble. The artist statement. Oh, yeah. It's more than just describing your art. It's about conveying your unique artistic voice, you know. It's about sharing the why behind the what, right? Exactly. Think of it as a way to connect with the viewer on a deeper level, sharing your inspirations, your emotions, the stories you weave into your art. It's like um, the article mentions this. Inspired by the rugged beauty of the coastline, I translate the ocean's raw power onto canvas using bold strokes and a vibrant palette. It's evocative. It tells you something about the artist's process. It makes you feel something. Exactly. It piques your curiosity and makes you want to see those breaststrokes, that raw power for yourself. Now, of course, all of this is meaningless if the images you're showcasing are subpar. Right. High quality images are non-negotiable. Absolutely. No blurry photos, no weird lighting, no distracting backgrounds, just crisp, clear images that allow your art to shine. Think of it this way. Would you rather see, like a breathtaking sunset in person, or like a faded, blurry picture of it. It's like capturing that essence, that magic, in its purest form. So we've got our portfolio shining, our media kit all prepped, artist statement is singing, and those uh, images, those are looking crisp as can be. Now comes the actual application. And the article, it really stresses, you know, the, the, this is where like meticulous attention to detail oh, yeah. can make or break your chances. It's true. 
think of those submission guidelines like a treasure map. Yeah. If you don't follow the instructions precisely, you'll never find that buried treasure. It doesn't matter how brilliant your art is. And it all starts with that often overlooked but crucial element, that cover letter. It's your first impression. It's your chance to show that you're not just another name in their inbox. <laughs> the article really emphasizes um, personalization. It's not enough to just say, like, hey, I make art. Check it out. Right, right. It's about crafting a message that resonates with that uh, specific platform that you're, you're targeting. Exactly. Take the time to address the recipient by name, if possible. Mention something that you genuinely appreciate about their platform, right? Yeah. Maybe it's their focus on emerging artists, their uh, thought-provoking interviews, or even a particular feature that really resonated with you. It's like the example they give. I was particularly drawn to your recent feature on sustainable art practices as my own work explores similar themes of environmental awareness. Perfect. It shows you've done your homework, you're genuinely invested in their platform, and your work aligns with um, their overall vision. Right? Yeah, it's about finding those points of connection, those shared passions. Now, after hitting send comes the dreaded waiting game, which can be agonizing uh, for any artist. But the article doesn't leave you hanging. It delves into this, like, delicate art of the follow-up. It is an art form in itself. You want to strike that balance between expressing, you know, continued interest right. and coming across as, like, overly pushy. The article provides this great template for, like, a follow-up email. Hello, name. I hope this email finds you well. I submitted my work, title of artwork, for consideration two weeks ago and wanted to check on its status. Thank you for your time and consideration. It's polite, it's professional, and it reminds them of your submission without, you know, demanding a response. Right. It's about finding that sweet spot of gentle persistence. Okay, so let's say after all your hard work, you receive that coveted email. You've been featured. It's time to celebrate, right? Uh -huh. But the article, it emphasizes that getting featured, it's just the beginning. Exactly. It's time to amplify that achievement and social media becomes like your most powerful tool. It's like that saying, don't hide your light under a bushel. Right. It's time to let it shine. And the article really stresses authenticity here. It's not about like robotic announcements. It's about sharing your genuine excitement with your audience. Absolutely. Instead of a generic, check out my featured artwork. Try something like, I'm absolutely thrilled to share that my latest series, inspired by um, my grandmother's garden, is featured on Name of Platform this month. It's a project that's like near and dear to my heart, and I can't wait to hear your thoughts. Right. It's personal. It's heartfelt. And it invites your audience to be a part of your journey. Precisely. Mm -hmm. And don't underestimate the power of visuals. Mm -hmm. A captivating image, a short video, even like a behind-the-scenes peep at your creative process right. can make all the difference. Social media's visual playground. It's about using those tools to your advantage. Absolutely. A picture could be worth a thousand words, right? Yeah. And remember those Instagram and Facebook stories? Yeah. They're perfect for those... Uh, bite-sized snippets of excitement, yeah. you know, ah. offering your audience a glimpse behind the curtain. It's about keeping them engaged, giving them a reason to stick around and see what you're up to next. The article also stresses the importance of engagement. It's not just about, like, broadcasting your achievement. It's about being um, an active participant in the conversation. Exactly. Respond to comments, answer questions, thank people for their support, show them that you're not just, like, a faceless profile. You're a real person who values their engagement. It's about building that community, that sense of connection. And don't forget about collaboration. Tag the platform that featured you. Use relevant hashtags. Connect with uh, other featured artists. Even reach out to the editors or writers. Cross-promotion can be incredibly beneficial for everyone involved. Right. It's like creating a web of support and exposure, reaching far beyond what you could achieve on your own. Exactly. And remember, consistency is key. Mm -hmm. Spread the news across different social media platforms, tailoring your message to each audience. What resonates on Instagram might need, like a slightly different approach on LinkedIn, for example. It's about meeting your audience where they are, speaking their language. And don't be afraid to get creative. Share different images, highlight a quote from the feature, or even host a Q&A session based on your artwork. Keep the momentum going, you know? Right. The article encourages artists to think outside the box and find... Um, new and engaging ways to keep their audience interested. So we've covered a lot of ground here, from understanding the value of getting featured to finding the right platforms, crafting a stellar application, and even leveraging your success strategically. What does all of this mean for you, the artist listening right now? 
The online art world, it could feel overwhelming at times, but it's also brimming with possibilities. Mm -hmm. By approaching it strategically, consistently putting in the effort, and never underestimating the power of community and authentic engagement, you can open doors that you might never have thought possible. It's like we've said, you know, throughout this whole deck dive, the online art world, it's waiting to be uh, inspired by you. It truly is. And the beauty of it all is that, you know, you don't have to have it to figure it out, mm -hmm. you know, from day one, right? It's a process. Exactly. You experiment, you learn, you adapt. The key is to, you know, to start, take that first step, even if it feels small. Maybe it's finally like creating that Behance profile you've been putting off or reaching out to an artist that you really admire for advice mm. or even just like jotting down those long tail keywords that, uh, that we talked about. Precisely. Every journey, no matter how grand, it begins with a single step.